Welcome back to Let's Talk Careers. I'm so excited to bring another incredible guest. Today, we are zooming around the world all the way to Alberta, Canada, where we're going to be meeting with Letty Crossgree. Letty is a career practitioner with Livingstone Range School Division, and she's going to be talking to us about her own career journey and, of course, giving us some incredible insights from her experiences to help the youth, parents, and career counselors helping young people. Welcome, Letty. Thank you. Super excited. I know it's nighttime for you, so we're going to jump right in and try not to keep you up too late, but we're so excited that you could join us. It's always wonderful to be collaborating with practitioners across the globe and bringing incredible insights to help parents and students on that career journey. But before we get into that topic, Letty, I'd like to take you back on memory lane to a time when the younger Letty was just beginning to discover herself maybe in middle school or early high school time. What was that like for you? Uh, well, I remember that. I, I grew up in uh, Toronto, in North York. And I remember us doing career assessments in grade eight social studies. And it always, throughout my life, it, any assessment that I ever did, one of the careers that was highlighted was social worker, teacher, uh, rabbi, uh, priest, minister, and I would just kind of, uh, yeah, okay, well, what, like, what am I really going to do with that information in the future? Um, and when I got to be in grade 12, and at that time, grade 13 in Ontario, and my my dad was concerned because I seemed to lack direction. I was just going about trying to get good marks in high school and not really worrying about what would happen after but I was the last of four girls to leave the nest and so I had a lot of attention I was the last one left at home and my dad took it upon himself to say well you, you know we need to get Letty going on something and he said you know what about computer science Letty computer science that's the wave of the future and I said I'm really not interested in computers dad I'm interested in helping people well, why don't you talk to a social worker and find out what that's like? And and we know a social worker. And so I strummed up my courage and I called this social worker, this woman that I've known most of my life, but I was still nervous because what do I know, right? I'm 17 and I, I didn't have a lot of confidence. So I asked uh, this person what she thought about me going into social work and she was adamant against that as a career choice for me. She said, you will hate it. It's miserable work, Letty. It's depressing. You're disrupting families. You see a lot of really nasty stuff. Don't do it. And so that just left me thinking, okay, well, I, I have to listen to this person. She's been in the field for her whole career. Um, obviously, that's not a good choice. Um, but what when I think about that, what I didn't do was ask five or 10 other social workers, um, people who worked in different areas of social work, because throughout my career, I have learned that I am drawn to working with people, not with machinery, not equipment, hopeless with that. Um, but I do love to speak to people and make a difference in their lives. And that's really what teachers and rabbis yeah. and uh, social workers do. Um, but I just hadn't found my niche. <laughs> no, I, I'm I'm loving where you're going with this because a couple of things came up as you were retelling that story, things that are still happening with young people. On the one hand, I could sense that your father, your parents really wanted to help you on that path. And I could also hear without all the words being said, and correct me if I'm wrong, is trying to tap into what they knew occupations to be that they thought might be something of interest for you. And then also hearing the person that you turned to, the social worker, who obviously very clearly wasn't happy with her career path, and given that empowerment to share that with a young person who's on that career confusion journey. So, mm -hmm. I, you know, it's it always surprises me at how young people are really in a vulnerable place when they're discovering that career. Would you say that that has been your experience, both on, on a personal level on your journey and now watching young people come through your office as you help them 
that they are so vulnerable to role models. And I think sometimes role models underestimate the power of their stories. That is so true. I, I remember watching the last Olympics, and I think there were two Olympians who who said, you know, the person that I talked to in high school said, choose another career. You are not going to make it as a professional athlete or an amateur athlete or an athlete at all. Choose a different sport, choose a different career. I'm constantly running into people who say that they received bad advice. And, and that just makes me even more committed to not be that person. And even if, you know, if somebody is failing biology, but they want to be a nurse, I am not about to say, okay, this doesn't make sense. You're not going to be a nurse. I My job is to research, find information and deliver it in a kind way to that person and say, okay, what's going on with this biology class? Are you are you really taking it seriously? Are you doing your homework? Are you getting help? Are you putting your hand up in class? What's going on? Would it be worth it to try it again? Maybe with a different teacher, maybe in a different school system, maybe online, whatever. Um, or do we look at other options? Um, because we all know, I, I don't know if it's this way globally, but certainly in Canada, nursing four year degree programs are incredibly competitive. Um, stupidly competitive, right? And it's not to say that everybody with an 88% average is going to be an incredible nurse, but there are, those seats are limited. So yeah, it's definitely, I feel that it's, um, it's an honor and it's a, it's a big commitment for me to have. And I, I feel that this is, this is a type of social work that I hadn't even considered mm. would be a job. And my first job after university was managing a higher student program. It was a federal government program at the time. And I just thought, this is incredible. I'm getting paid to help other people find meaningful work for the summer. What could be better? It was just such a great opportunity. So um, now working with high school students and junior high students, I think my mission is really to, to start the conversation as early as possible and not about what are you going to be when you grow up but who are you what do you like doing what do you want to do more of what do you want to do less of and what are some careers that align with that that's a big question isn't it is when you are sitting down I, I always say kind of going back to how you started the story with your father suggesting occupations I, I always like to ask students what they know about the world of work, because I think that's telling, isn't it? You know, it's it's helping it's helping the advisor, the counselor, the practitioner to understand their worldview of the world of work, and then to help them on that discovery process. But I don't think there's one right way to do it anyway. I think it really is about the student, which takes me to the motto that your institution and your the motto of of what you're striving to achieve every student every day tell us more about what that means and how it comes into context in the work that you do with young people i i think our division is um is really quite quite wonderful um quite wonderful to work for this division um we have some really unique initiatives we're we're all small schools we're in rural southern southwestern alberta and in so in some cases, we are limited in the in what we're able to offer students. So if a student needs physics 30, they better be ready to take it when it's offered because it's offered one class once a year, right? At most schools. Um, so that that provides some challenges. But we also have a really cool outdoor education program, um, particularly if we have a, a site in the mountains and we have students come out and do, we're building a mobile lab. So students can come out and take a botany course and an ecology course, um, an aquaponics course that are actually dual credit with our Lethbridge College, which is, you know, which is a main um, agricultural and environmental science programming college in our area. Um, we also have a ski school, a ski academy. So students get their, um, 
qualifications to teach skiing lessons and work on the ski hill, which is a great uh, job as you're going through high school. And last year, um, a, a flight school came to Claire's Home, the community that I live in. So students have an opportunity to um, become a, a private pilot while they're in high school. They can start taking courses in grade 10. So um, it's it's unique and, and it's about discovering as early as possible. I go in and talk to students in grade one, which is so much fun. Um, and I did a session for grade four students and it's actually quite amazing how much they do know at grade four. So when people say, oh, just wait until grade 10, let you know, don't bother them with this career nonsense. I disagree. I, I want to have those conversations early and have fun with it. There's a lot of pressure on our students to, to pick something for the next 50 years, you know, that they're going to enjoy and have a decent lifestyle and da, 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 da. There's a lot of expectations on that and, and parents freak out when their son or daughter is considering taking a gap year and grabbing a backpack and going around Europe. But sometimes those experiences, if they're measured and they're, um, they're safe and um, nurtured along the way, those can be the most important things to help students learn more about themselves and, um, and the world they live in and what kind of opportunities they might be drawn to. I'm very aligned with uh, everything that you're saying, Letty. My heartbeat did start to beat really fast when you were telling us about what, you know, they're telling you to wait till don't bother them with that career stuff. It, it always amazes me that many people still see the world of work in one box and life in another box. And actually, young people are exposed to the world of work from day one, like, you know, they're born into the world of work. It is a, it's a conversation, isn't it? It's not a decision before you graduate, which is really sad. And I think it's a very limited way of looking at supporting young people. Anyway, that's a whole different conversation. Definitely one for a bigger stage, but Letty, let's jump into your top career tips. <clears throat> when you're helping young people in your, in your location, how do you make sure that you're not limiting them to staying in that location? Being aware of that, I mean, Canada is the second largest country in the world, and they might even decide to travel abroad. How do you make sure that those young people are prepared for the world of work that may mean that they leave their location? Mm -hmm. Because that's a big one, isn't it? That is a big question. And there are a lot of students who have been born and raised and their grandparents were born and raised in this area. And, um, and it's a beautiful area. We're in the, we're in the mountains, we're in the foothills. Um, we're an hour away from an hour and a half away from a beautiful national park, Waterton Lakes National Park. We're also really close to Banff and Jasper. So there are a lot of students who have absolutely no intention of leaving the province of Alberta long term they're 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 okay with with investigating and i i have on our school websites a list i called it letty's list of cool things because i want to encourage students to sample different cultures and whether that's doing an exchange or just taking um taking a short break between high school and university maybe being a woofer um, worldwide opportunities on organic farms. Um, why not? Like, why not just sample different things and see what that gives you? Um, and you may decide, like some students are, I'm getting out of here. I want to go to, um, I want to go to BC or I want to go to Ontario. So there's, there's a mix. Um, and I think students who have done more travel whether that's independent with friends, with grandparents, with their parents, they tend to be more open about leaving. Um, and we also, as a community, we want to provide opportunities that are rich for our students so that if they do want to stay here, they have, um, they have meaningful work and they have a, a, you know, a good lifestyle. So, um, when I'm doing things even with elementary schools, I'll do maybe a trade fair, a career fair, um, and bring in people who work in that in our area 
Um, and I, it's amazing how I've tripped over people and think, you do what? Like in this area? Like I, I met a person who trains animals for film and TV and commercials. And uh, she talked to students. I did a, a career fair for career people working in the arts. So I had a, a stunt um, driver, a stunt artist. I think I think that's what it's called. I can't even think. It was, um, in the film industry and I had a bronze sculptor. And these were all people who live and work in southwestern Alberta um, so that they can see you don't have to necessarily leave this area to have a fulfilling career. Um, but if you choose to, that's great as well. There's there's something for every type of interest that you have. We can work on that. So amazing, isn't it? We're not just helping young people on that discovery journey. We're we're actually helping them blossom into their future self. And I, I was speaking with uh, another educator a couple of days ago, and and she described it as helping to cultivate young people's future careers. It's really exciting. Mm -hmm. Letty, let's talk about your tip for volunteering. Why is it important that young people spend more time doing some volunteer service work? Well, I think it's good for the soul, number one. Um, I've always been a big believer in giving back to community, and our students are already doing that. They're seeing that um, in their own families. They're seeing it in, in our community. Um, and that's I think the good thing about a small community is that we recognize volunteers. So we'll have a we have a volunteer citizen of the year and a junior citizen of the year, and they really recognize and acknowledge the volunteering that goes on. Um, students can receive in Alberta. You need a hundred credits to graduate, and you can actually volunteer um, or have paid work applied to up to fifteen of those one hundred credits to to graduate. So it's a good incentive, but I think from my perspective, it's just great to learn about yourself, to get out of your own problems um, and leap into someone else's problems sometimes, but just see how other people live and how you can help your community. There's lots and lots of opportunities for volunteering. Students are doing volunteer work without even thinking about it, just when they offer to, to shovel somebody's walk um, or they're, they're helping me with something, organizing for an event. It all counts and it all matters. Um, and sometimes that's a great way for students to get into the workforce, build their, their reputation, build their references, um, and it can result in additional scholarships. Not that students need to volunteer just to get scholarships, that's their goal, but it's a nice byproduct of volunteering. Love it, love it, love it. We're just going to come right to an end. And before we do that, you've got your number one tip says to be curious and to talk to as many people as possible to discover. But your number three says say yes to as many opportunities as possible. How does number one and number three connect in your through your eyes? I, I think they're very, very closely aligned, right? It's, um, I was thinking about what my my mom said to me years ago that her mom had said to her when she was sort of lamenting that she was getting on in years and hadn't found a husband yet. And my grandmother said, you know, be the most interesting person you can be, you know, focus on yourself. And I think that's excellent advice. Um, and how do you get to be an interesting person? Well, talk to other interesting people and read and um Get out your front door and explore, explore your community, be curious. And when someone um, invites you to something and you don't necessarily want to go, find a way if you can to go and just even for half an hour, right? Often once you get in there and you're okay, those feelings of nervousness and anxiety kind of float away because you're getting interested in, in the current activity. So the more that you can do that um, in safe, controlled circumstances, I think you benefit supremely from, from just doing that. So such valuable uh, tips, Letty. I really appreciate that. If there was one thing that you could say to a career practitioner, 
right now from your experience, what would that one thing be? Take the time, take mm-hmm. the time to get to know your clients, get to know your students. Um, I, I have seen, I hate, I hate to blame people, but I have seen um, teachers and from my own experience as a university student where you feel inferior to your professors, you know, they sort of look down on you and I had one professor <laughs> say, the name, and I said, the, the name of my paper? Oh, no, you're asking about my name? And I, I very clearly understood that I really didn't matter. I was an inconvenience to him. And so those subtle things, like when people come into my office, and I might be in the middle of something, I will, they'll, they will always say, Letty, are you busy? And I'll say, I am never too busy to talk to you. I, I need to, you know, just send this email and then you've got my full attention. And I, I always look them in the eye, ask them to sit down, like make them feel comfortable. I want to be the person that they feel um, they can trust, that I'm going to do what I say I do for them and follow through. And I'm not perfect. I do. I mess up. But um, my intentions are always good. And, um, and I, I really, really do try to get back in touch with parents and students the same day. If I'm busy with something, I really try to not delay um, and keep up on those emails and just, just give them time and give them a smile. It's tough being a teenager. It's really, we put a lot of expectation and pressure on them as we do on, on adults. But I think predominantly um, teenagers, because they, they don't, they're not independent. Right. So, um, we have to really be careful and just uh, just take the time and be with them. So important. They're not. They're. It's like they're they're not independent. We we treat them like children right until they have to leave, and then suddenly <laughs> they have to be yeah. adults. And it's almost it's almost like an overnight situation, isn't it? I mean, I I had a conversation with a year twelve student who said. They tell us that we need to make big life choices, but I still have to put my hand up to go to the bathroom in class. And That's you know, right. it's these things that that I think we forget sometimes as educators and practitioners and parents that they're not going to be ready in five minutes. We need to take that time and and cultivate, I guess, as my colleague said, cultivate this preparedness for their future. Letty. It has been amazing speaking with you. Thank you so much for taking the time. I know it's late for you. So we're going to bring this right to a wrap. I I really appreciate that you do the work that you do, but also that you share your top tips and your insights, because I think the work that we do wherever we are in the world is collaborative work. And we're creating a world together, aren't we? And young people that we're helping at different parts of the world are going to interconnect in their future. So thank you for being here with me and taking the time. And thank you everybody for watching. We spoke with Letty Crossbury, who is a career practitioner with Livingstone Range School Division in Alberta, Canada. Thank you for being here with me. And I look forward to seeing you at our next Let's Talk Careers with Miss V.